Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mass. So whether you're here gathered with us in person or if you're outside in the parking lot or looking on from home, we're grateful that you are here. So as we begin, I invite you to turn to page 550 in the gray songbook in front of you and please stand and join in singing, sing a new song. Good morning. You know what was really, really different this morning watching you come in? I got to see sunglasses on some of you. Wow. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May God's grace and peace be with you. Thanks. And as we begin this Mass, let's just be quiet for a moment and think where we want God's light to shine into our lives as we walk into this new week. Lord Jesus, you came to reveal the Father's love for us. Lord, have mercy. Your Holy Spirit was sent to help us build up your church. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. of the 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. My lips and in my heart. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. He's taller than me. Good morning. I also forgot my glasses. When I was a kid, I was in fourth grade. 
I decided that I wanted to play Little League Baseball. So I tried out and got assigned to a team. My parents had given me a baseball glove, and the coach gave all the team members uniforms. And I remember thinking, wow, this is going to be great. I had visions of catching fly balls and hitting home runs and being the most valuable player on the team. See, the kids in my neighborhood played a kind of one-on-one -on -one form of baseball with an oversized plastic bat and an oversized hollow plastic baseball with, with holes in it. And those balls were tossed underhand. It wasn't much, but that was pretty good. The problem was that in Little League, they used smaller wooden bats and real baseballs. And aside from the uniform and the glove, I had no talent. <laughs> My eyesight, eyesight wasn't very good, so my eye-to-hand coordination prevented me from really seeing a baseball coming over the plate, much less hitting it. And not recognizing the strengths of playing with a well-coordinated team, I didn't even foresee that the other players on the team might be better than me. And once I discovered that was so, well, I was ready to quit. I didn't, but... I think many of us on that team experienced something similar, though at the time, we didn't know it. In today's second reading, St. Paul is writing to the Christian people in Corinth. Corinth was a, was a Greek seaport with a wide mix of people of different ethnic groups. It had a combination of folks which occasionally brought about division that, that threatened its unity. And Paul was worried that some in the community might quit or break apart into smaller fighting groups. You see, that was a relatively young community at the time, and the people there were new in their faith, so new that they didn't really know how to use the gifts that they'd been given, or even recognize that others had gifts to be used for the good of the community as well. Today's reading is actually a much smaller version of what Paul is saying to them, but he's concerned about building up the family there, the church. He calls it the body of Christ. And he's writing about the need for them to have respect for each other and unity and mutual love. And in today's selection from that letter, Paul is speaking to a Christian community blessed with an incredible outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He mentions people becoming prophets and teachers and preachers and healers, you name it, the Holy Spirit had gifted the job to somewhat, someone in Corinth. And those folks were <clears throat> exercising their gifts in amazing ways that drew a lot of attention, not unlike kids with outstanding athletic abilities as opposed to kids without them. And it was causing trouble. So Paul wrote to those people at Corinth to tell them to enjoy and express their gifts in ways that would strengthen and unify the community and give glory to God and not themselves. He compares unity in that church of Corinth with different parts of the human body. And each member of the church is compared to one of the parts of the body, which with God's special gifts makes a unique contribution to the health of the whole body. And Paul tells these spirit gifted people to find Jesus in their community by recognizing Jesus in one another, lest the community break apart or worse. Well, that same request is being asked of us today. The truth is that we are not all alike, and we have each been given a unique combination of gifts. Personally, as much as I'd wanted to, I learned I was never going to play baseball very well anyway. But I was given gifts, and I've been discovering them ever since. Now maybe you've experienced some of that as well. The reality is that you are here today because God chose you to be here in this time and in this age. He has chosen you. He has wanted you, each one of you, from all eternity. And on top of that, while you may not realize it or, or believe it, he has given each one of us gifts to be used for each other 
and in service to him and the rest of his family. Now, of course, there are times, no matter how young or old you are, when you do feel like you don't have any value or any use, or maybe you look at others and think about their gifts and become jealous or envious or maybe just sullen and depressed over what others have that you don't have. I once had an employer who told an unruly employee, I don't need you. Well, I can tell you this, God does not say that to you, and he sent his son as proof of that. The truth is that we've all been given gifts by God who loves us and values us and treasures us. And even if you don't know what your gifts are right now, that does not mean that God wants to get along without you or that you're not important to him. So there are a couple of things that you can do if you don't know what your gifts are. First, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to awaken in you what it is that he's given you and how he wants you to use it. The family of God, after all, is quite large, and you may not now have a clue as to how you are to serve it, but you have to ask him. Do you, do you remember last week Father Dave saying that God asks all of us, let me in? Do you remember that? Well, that's true, but sometimes we need to invite him to come in before he will. I don't go into homes where I'm not invited. I'm sure you don't. And I know God won't. So, invite him in. But the other thing you can choose to do while you're waiting to find out what your gifts are is this. You can love. Later in that same letter that Paul wrote, he's going to tell us that the greatest gifts of the Holy Spirit are faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of those is love. We've all been given that gift. We can't all be prophets and healers and teachers or even baseball players, but we can all choose to exercise at least one gift, and that gift is love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we bring our prayers. That each of us will come to recognize what our gifts from God are and how to use them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the word of God in scripture and tradition may be alive in each of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that government leaders will listen to and act on the word of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that as many parts of one body, we may work for the poor and disadvantaged in our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. And God, our Father, hear our prayers offered in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray now that your offerings and mine will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to raise you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. So we join together with angels and saints as we sing of your glory. God, our Father, you are indeed holy and to be glorified. You are present in our midst when we are gathered by your love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Holy Father, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope and Alexander our Bishop, that we may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember all the dead. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. And when our earthly pilgrimage is done, grant that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. Then in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our day. With the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May God's peace be with you. Amen. Let us share a sign of that peace.
Behold, behold the Lamb of God. <clears throat> behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Looking ahead, folks, we have some gatherings coming up for various age groups. We have a retreat for our young adults. Details are in the bulletin for that. We have our next women's retreat, sponsored by Christ Free News' Parish, also in the bulletin this week. And we have a support gathering for all caregivers coming up as well. So details in the bulletin for all of those. And really good news, we have coffee and donuts downstairs. Come on down. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Amen.